everybody. I thought I'd make a quick short video about the reliability of Michael Engineering pumps. This is not sponsored, uh, but I just wanted to let you know um, how surprised I was. I, I built this thing or rebuilt it uh, after I inherited it with my two Lancer kits. So it actually came with one of them. And I uh, completely disassembled it and did a bunch of work to clean it up, you know, with acetone and everything. And the product is now, um, you know, super clean. And what's what I really wanted to point out was this thing was made in 1994. So this thing's been around the block for a long time. And uh, after cleaning it up, it's like new. And then Michael's Engineering keeps database of everything. They've updated who owns it. And I ordered some replacement parts. So if you see the before and after, these are the new tubs. So I basically got a rebuild kit for it with a couple of parts, valves, and seals. And I'm going to put it back together really quick. So this is a uh, adjustable ratio pump for anyone who's never used one or built a, uh, a kit aircraft. This pump it actually has a ratio that can be adjusted not only by moving the block for the hardener to adjust the ratio, but also by moving this slide block on the um, handle. And they're connected by almost like a chain link. And they're very simple design, but they're actually very robust and reliable. So... When you uh, want to change the ratio, you can actually go to the back side of the pump and adjust the bolts here and slide this back and forth. Now, you really don't have to do too much of that. It gets you in the ballpark, it, but uh, then you do your final adjustments with this slide block. So every time you depress the handle, you get a stroke on the piston of both of them, and you get an amount of both epoxy uh, from your um, a resin and then catalyst or hardener from the other pump. And how you adjust these determines how much you get with each stroke. So in the rebuild kit, I got uh, new tubes because they were clogged. And then I also got new seals for the base here that go on top of the valves. And I'm going to put it back together. And when I'm done, I'm going to show you what it looks like. So first we put on the rubber uh, gaskets. And we're going to install the catalyst uh, reservoir first. And basically these sit on top of these. And then they have a metal washer that goes inside. Along with the... Oops, I knocked over the rubber piece so basically when you're done it looks like this you have these on the outside these on the inside along with the uh, valves so these basically are suction based and engaged to allow you to pull whenever you're stroking the pump so I'm going to put these together and let you see the final thing yeah hang on so there you have it, folks. It's put back together, and we have our uh, new reservoirs installed. And I'll take the lid off so you can see how these work. Now, I'm not quite sure how to adjust these yet. I'll have to consult the manual, but there is a nut on the top of that, and I'm not sure how it works, but there's a spring in it as well. But yeah, this thing has been around since, two, since 1994. And uh, that's pretty shocking to me that this pump has not only survived that long, but was very easy to repair and rebuild. So I spent very little money, about 100 bucks, for the rebuild kit. And I'll be filling it up with the uh, Rhino epoxy here uh, pretty soon. And yeah, I'll bring an update again. So I'm getting ready to start building. And I'll just let people know what I'm doing I'm working on these cradles for the uh, main spar. So basically they're indexing locations. And I've been, I had one old one, but I'm basically making a new one right now, so. 
So that's it for this video. Look forward to the next one where we'll pick up with the wing saddles that I just showed you.